Okay guys, and we are now inside of the 2023 Mazda CX-9 Signature. Now, let's start it up. Really nice animations Mazda do on their interiors. Just dim the displays for you guys so it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see. And we already did a full tour of this exterior. But I'm just going to give you a quick little walk around really fast. It's in sole red crystal metallic paint. Mazda's signature 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder under the hood, powering all four wheels, up to 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. Really love this illuminated grill thing. This is really, really cool. Three rows of seating back here. With this really nice Napa leather signature premium um, interior finish. I really love that. Just want to give you guys a quick look of this before we head on a drive and i say let's go awesome so we are inside of the cx9 now it's a really really quiet interior which i love the heads-up display right there we also can have apple carplay as you can see right here which is really nice and i love this quick access function you just hold the home button down brings you from Apple CarPlay into um, the whole regular system and back to Apple CarPlay really, really easily, which I think is fantastic. Some maps up there as well. We have our digital gauge cluster in front of us that can adjust a few different things. We've been averaging around 20 miles to the gallon over around 500 miles almost. So not the best fuel economy, but these are larger vehicles. Um, and I bet you if there's more highway driving, I think you'd do better um, fuel economy there. So let's take off. Now, the Mazda CX-9 really and truly does set itself apart in its driving experience. So all these other vehicles in this very, very crowded segment are very focused on cargo space and passenger room. And as they should be, it's kind of the point of the segment. But Mazda wanted to infuse their own kind of soul, their own driving ethos and experience into this vehicle. So it is a little bit shorter. It's a little bit short on cargo room as well. And I think that makes up for in it in its driving experience, as well as this interior quality, which is just top notch. Um, even for how old this vehicle is, it is really, really nice in here. And I really do appreciate that. Now this one is sitting around $50,000. This is the top end signature trim and pretty much everything you need as well. So it has all the goods. Now, there's really no point in doing a launch with the CX-9 as it is a family SUV, but shockingly, it can get to 60 in around like seven-ish seconds, which is pretty impressive. Um, you do have a sport mode if you want to put sport mode on. And this is one thing that I love with this engine is that in every vehicle I've driven with this engine, it's pretty much been almost every car in Mazda's lineup. It has this really unique sound for a four cylinder. It's really, this is a deep um, <laughs> kind of grunty noise to it. It's super, super unique. You also can hear like turbo whistle sometimes, which is really, really cool to me. I don't know, I think that's just a really cool um, enthusiastic experience that you get in the CX-9. Now, I also want to talk about handling. Now, this is a three row, family vehicle that can seat up to seven. So you really shouldn't be talking about handling, I guess, in a review, but that's what kind of Mazda wanted to infuse into this car. So I have to talk about it. And shockingly, this actually drives really well for what it is. Um, with that shorter wheelbase, you are gonna be able to have a little more of an agile vehicle versus something like a Hyundai um, Palisade or a Kia Telluride. And people do appreciate that actually. And it does have a nice pad booted step. It, it can get up and go if you really do need it to, which I think is fantastic. I've never ever felt that it doesn't have enough power, which I think is important as well. Um, Mazda also has thrown in their um, kind of G-vectoring control, which kind of is a behind the scenes system that's kind of controlling the brakes and the torque of the vehicle to help you manage the body weight and help you control the vehicle better through corners, which is really fantastic. And it does work and you definitely can kind of feel it in the background a little bit. Um, also, I do have to point out this steering. Mazda and all the vehicles has really great steering, which is again, weird to be talking about, I guess, in a um, three-year-old vehicle, but I appreciate it. So I'm gonna talk about it. It is very, very well 
weighted. It feels natural. And I think that's a really big important thing with these vehicles is that everything in this vehicle feels right. It feels like it was balanced for this car. The steering feels like it was balanced for the car. The engine feels like it was made for the vehicle. The chassis is very well controlled and balanced. The suspension is works for the vehicle. I can't say that about every other car in this segment. So if you're talking about something like a Subaru Ascent, for example, I feel some things are a little bit out of whack and there's not a lot of unison. So it's a safe, comfortable vehicle and has all that Subaru um, backing to it. But I feel very, very um, confident and safe in this vehicle as well along with um, the driving experience is really well composed for this type of car class of vehicle. Busy on the highway today, guys. And yeah, now we're up to highway speeds. It's pretty quiet and comfortable as well. I will do. I will say though, if you are going around town, the steering is heavy. Um, way, way more heavy than anything I've ever felt in this class and even some other classes of vehicle that it might be a little bit of a turn off to you. Um, but I think it's well appreciated. If you're coming out of like your Miata or something and you want to stay in your Mazda family and you're used to that kind of like soulful driving experience, you're going to feel right at home in the CX-9. Um, I think that was kind of Mazda's point on making this vehicle. Um, so I'm really interested to see how the CX-90, when that when I'm able to drive that, is kind of compared to this um, era of Mazda SUVs as that's on a whole new rear wheel drive based platform with the inline six engine, plug in hybrid stuff. So I'm really excited to see that. Though, now that we are on the highway, I always like to mention Mazda's safety systems and how I'm not particularly the biggest fan of them. Um, I, mainly in the, in the aspect of this is they're not very aggressive or they're not really as advanced, I think, as competitors. Um, so example, you do have radar guided cruise control, which you can access on the steering wheel. So you can turn on, on really quickly and just press set and you're at that speed. You can jump through increments of five miles an hour and, and all those different numbers if you wanna to get to your speed, so that's fine. You also can control your following distance, which shows up in your heads-up display, which is really cool. Now, my issues are with kind of the lane keep assist system particularly. It's not good. It's one of those systems that pogos you in between the lanes, so it's never gonna actually like kind of keep you centered in the lane. It's just gonna keep you from jumping out of the lane and I don't think those are the safest systems on the market and I think that's where a lot of people get confused where some vehicles such as like a Subaru the Subaru system it will actually be steering you through the lanes now you have to keep your hands on the wheel of course but those systems actually will be steering you and you can watch the steering wheel move this one does not do that um, it will it'll just keep going until it notices you're bumping out of the lane then it'll bump you back into the lane it'll veer into the other direction it'll bump you back into that direction I don't like that. I don't think that's a safe system to be um, on the market. And I hope they can improve on this in the future. And nonetheless, I do actually like the radar um, cruise part of this system. It is pick up pretty well. Um, I like the the um, variety of the following distances. It gets pretty close if you want it to be, and you get it pretty far away if you also want that. So I do like that aspect. I also love blind spot monitoring. This system works fine, no complaints there. And I do like how it kind of displays your blind spot. Um, if there's a vehicle in your blind spot in your heads up display, along with the side mirrors. And if you want to turn on um, the additional um, driving assistance system display on your uh, center driving display, that will also show up there as well. So I like that feature. It's just, it isn't the most advanced safety systems on the market. And this is, goes for almost all Mazda vehicles right now. I mean, if you aren't a fan of these systems and don't even use them in the first place, it's not really an issue, but a lot of people are interested in these systems these days. And I definitely have to talk about it um, because it's, it's just something we have to deal with now. Another thing to point out is that um, sport mode does not work with um, cruise control. I think other few vehicles do that as well. But if you do want to enter sport, well, you're going to have to turn off your radar guided cruise control. Now, I did just take this car on a pretty long road trip, and I used the radar cruise control the entire way. So I've, I've gotten a lot of experience with it. And everything what I just said holds to be the same as well. Um, it works great with the radar cruise control part, but the active steering assist doesn't exist. It's just kind of like a lane keeping pogo system. And honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's also very, very um, sensitive sometimes. So if you don't have your hands on the wheel, it'll start beeping at you, which is good. Um, and it also is very sensitive with its, with its driver attention assist system. So I think it connects all those together and will start beeping at you like, take a break, take a break. Um, so I, I did notice that a few times as well. 
nonetheless though this is a very quiet cabin and i really do appreciate it um i have noticed though that compared to a, i guess a subaru you might, might want to compare it to or even some of the other competitors the visibility isn't the best i would say and i actually don't mind that at all i actually like the smaller windows a little bit i feel i like to feel more enclosed in the cabins but that's a personal preference if you want more of that i guess fishbowl style um experience or one with a way greater visibility you're going to want to go with a subaru because the windshields are massive the windows on the side windows are huge this feels a little bit more car like versus suv like and you can also kind of feel that in the seating experience like i'm sitting at the lowest setting right now but you can definitely get way up higher in this seat and kind of feel like you're driving more of like a true SUV, but it does give you that versatility of both. You can kind of hear that nice engine grunt right there. And yeah, overall, this is, it's a great vehicle, I think, to road trip as well. And I'm just gonna show you quickly in the operation and with this scroll wheel and Apple CarPlay, it works fine. You get used to it really, really easily. Just pop through the different menus and like that. And it, it's kind of like this muscle memory thing that once you do it like one or two times, you'll always get it. Some people may not like it still, but I have no problem with it personally. If you all if you also are a big Mazda fan, you will quickly point out that this one does not have their newer heartbeat style turning indicators, but I think that's something that we can all look over a little bit, even though I am a big fan of those. Yeah, a little bit of a taste for the handling in this current corner over here. For a big three row SUV, it is pretty agile. And I think that's pretty impressive. Oh, is that a roof box on the Panamera? Oh, that looks awesome. Cool stuff, guys. Um, yeah, so that's a quick little highway drive of the Mazda CX-9. Pretty quiet inside, I do like that. And I do like how they actually kind of allow some of the engine noise to be let into the cabin. Um, it actually does provide a little bit more of a more natural experience. Whoa cutting straight through traffic. And if you do want a little bit of illumination in the cabin, pretty bright LED lights in here as well. Really nice. And Mazda's um, base infotainment system is, like I said, super easy to use. So you have information, entertainment, communication settings. And there are actually an insane amount of settings in this system. It may not look like it at first, but you can adjust a lot of stuff in here from your lighting adjustments to um, different um, kind of like commands when you get in and out of the vehicle to the heads up display, to the center display, to vehicle connectivity settings and the sound settings as well. Um, this has the Bose audio system and actually it is fantastic. If you don't know the audio industry class, um, even for Bose, they have different tiers of audio systems. And so a, a example of is um, a Nissan Bose audio system is not the same as a Mazda system or as a more premium vehicle. They're all different and they all are tuned specifically and designed for these vehicles. So Mazda's systems, for example, all sound really, really good actually. And this one is no exception. Really love that engine grunt sound. You may notice I have not used the paddle shifters really at all in this drive. And I, again, I don't think it's really worth it to use the paddle shifters in this SUV. They work, it's a six speed automatic gearbox, but you don't really need them. Now, one big complaint though, I do have to say, I wish the brakes were a little bit stronger. They do, there is a bit of some pedal travel before you really get to a, like a nice solid um, confidence on the brakes. And this is one thing I have noticed a lot of Mazda vehicles as well. So I wish they can improve on that in the future. They're fine, they obviously work well. It's just, they just feel like I, they could be a little bit improved. Quick look at the back camera once again. You do have parking sensors as well. 
very crystal clear camera views as well for the cameras themselves and trajectory which we love so yeah guys i just want to wrap up this full -on review of this mazda cx9 and i am super excited to drive the upcoming cx90 from mazda that's gonna be super exciting but if you are looking for a vehicle in this class, I definitely think you have to have a test drive in the Mazda CX-9. It's such a unique offering in the segment, as we've talked about, as it just gives you a much better driving experience if you really value that um, versus that extra 10 cubic feet of cargo room you're gonna to wanna to go with this vehicle. And I think it looks great still as well. So thank you guys for joining me on this full tour and review of the 2023 Mazda CX-9. And stay tuned for a lot more videos coming soon from All Car News. Cheers.